Well, hello there, friends. Um, my name is Scott with uh, Platte River Keto, and uh, today I would like to share uh, my story with you. My story so far, I guess. Um, I wanted to share with you my journey and how I came to keto um, and tell you a little bit about my health journey overall um, so that you can get a good idea of where I am and uh, where I'd like to go. So to start my health journey, it was a crisp day in September of 1980. That's probably a little too far back. Um, no, actually, I was a skinny-ish uh, kid until I was probably 10 or 11 years old, until I uh, started puberty. I don't actually, as I think back on it, I don't actually have any memories um, of being a skinny kid, but pictures say that I was. Um, but when I hit puberty, I uh, put on some weight and got a little bit uh, um, husky-ish. I was definitely not a skinny kid at any point after that. Um, like probably most people on the planet, I couldn't stand middle school. Um, it's funny in you know the many, many years since middle school, talking to friends of mine who were in middle school, and even the kids that supposedly had it together, the cool kids, they didn't like middle school either. So nobody liked middle school, but no, I of course didn't like middle school. Um, I got made fun of sometimes for my weight. Um, I was a little overweight, but I wasn't a lot overweight really. Um, I played sports quite a bit. I uh, played sports in junior high um, and in high school. I played um, pretty much everything up until high school. Uh, I played uh, soccer probably through uh, early part of junior high. I played basketball all the way through my freshman year of high school. I played football uh, all the way through high school. So while I was a little overweight and I definitely had uh, what I would call a very unhealthy relationship with food, um, because I was active and remained very active, I kind of kept my weight in check. Um, because I played football in high school, I have a pretty good idea of what I weighed. Um, my junior year of high school, I played football at 240 pounds. Uh, now, I am not quite five foot ten. I think if you ask me, certainly in the program of a, of a football program, you, if anybody knows how the... Uh, falsehoods that are in high school football programs. I was probably listed at 5'11". I know I wasn't listed at six foot, but I am not quite five foot ten. I'm five foot nine and a half. And uh, I played football my junior year at 240 pounds. Uh, and my senior year, I played at about 260 pounds. Um, now my weight, um, I wouldn't say it hindered my life really in high school. Like I said, I was always kind of the bigger kid, um, but it didn't keep me from doing things that I wanted to do. I played sports. Uh, I was able to actually be in our show choir where I sang and danced and did that sort of thing. And, and like I said, I was always the bigger kid, but it wasn't um, anything that really hindered my life too much. Uh, I was self-conscious about it, but, um, you know, while being on the bigger side, I, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't uh, big enough that it impacted my daily life, really. Um, after high school, I served a two-year mission for my church. Uh, I served a, a mission in Donetsk, Ukraine, and so I lived in the eastern half of Ukraine for two years. Um, during that time, I walked a lot. Uh, we didn't drive at all, and so either we walked or we took public transportation. So by the time I got home from my two-year mission for my church, I was actually down to about 230 pounds, which again, for somebody who's not quite five foot ten, is certainly not slender by any means, um, but I was kind of almost what you'd call in, in halfway decent shape. It was probably, probably at least partially for malnutrition, to be honest. We, we didn't have access to a lot of uh, really good and healthy foods, and I certainly didn't eat healthy, uh, and I didn't have a great relationship with food. And I, I still, you know, I didn't have a real positive uh, image of myself from a weight perspective then either. Um, but anyway, so I'd, I'd gotten down to about 230 pounds when I went off to college. Um, in college, I met my lovely, beautiful, wonderful wife. Um, I met her after I'd been in school for about a year, and we were married at the beginning, right before the beginning of my sophomore year of college. Um, they talk about putting on the, you know, your marriage 10 or 15. Uh, I probably put on the marriage 50 to 75. Uh, by the time we got married, I was probably 
probably pushing 300 pounds, but maybe not hadn't gotten quite to 300 pounds yet. Uh, but certainly not long after we were married, I was probably over 300 pounds. Um, I was concerned about my weight, but I didn't worry about it too much, I guess. Um, happy and married, and my wife is a wonderful person. She's loved me at every single size I've ever been. Um, and so that was nice to have somebody who really loved me unconditionally, and that was pretty great. Um, three years after we were married, uh, we had our son, Brandon. And uh, two and a half years after that, we had our daughter, Emily. And um, having those two kids, both times that my wife was pregnant, I decided to be very supportive of her by putting on lots of weight as she gained some pregnancy weight. Um, unfortunately, while she uh, was breastfeeding our children and that actually helped her to lose her pregnancy weight pretty quickly, I did not have that opportunity and uh, therefore kept the weight on. Uh, by the time our daughter, uh, after our daughter was born, um, I was probably pushing 400 pounds by that point. I, I had, there's pictures of me at one of my younger brother's weddings and I am easily, um, if not 400 pounds, I was almost 400 pounds. Um, I know for a fact that uh, by the time that July of 2010 rolled around, I was over 400 pounds. I was, uh, I weighed in at 403. And um, that was the first time that I really decided that I wanted to do something about my weight. Um, now, when I say that's the first time I really decided that I wanted to do something, throughout my adult life I had tried um, all kinds of different things. I have a, a bookshelf over here, um, and on that bookshelf you will find many self-help books uh, that talk about uh, different ways to lose weight. I have everything from uh, Dr. Phil's way of losing weight to, you know, various different books. Um, you know, South Beach, I, I've tried... A lot of different things. Uh, I've tried um, uh, Food Addicts Anonymous, Overeaters Anonymous, that sort of thing. Um, I was honestly too broke to really try anything like uh, Nutrisystem or Weight Watchers. Um, but I was constantly trying um, through different things to lose weight. And I tried different ways of getting active too. I think that uh, you know being active is, a, is a, definitely a big part of being healthy. But uh, anyway, so July of 2010 rolls around and I was in a pretty bad place from a health perspective. And um, I moved back um, from Utah where I had been living with my wife and kids to Nebraska. And uh, with the support of my parents, um, went on my first um, kind of journey, um, weight loss journey. And I had some real success uh, over a period of a couple of years. Um, I lost almost 140 pounds. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I take that back. I lost just over 140 pounds because the lowest weight that I got to during that journey was 258 pounds, down from 403. Um, I During that those couple of years, I had a personal trainer. I, I learned how to exercise. Um, I learned some things about nutrition, although to be honest with you, um, one of the reasons that I share part of that part of my journey is that I really never looked at my nutrition from a holistic perspective. I never really looked at um, a lifestyle change. I was on a diet, and I was on a diet for two years. And um, while I did some healthy things from a, from a food perspective, I really didn't have any idea what I was going to do if I actually got to my goal weight, which my goal weight at that time was really what my goal is now, uh, which is I wanted to see a one at the front of my weight. Um, but at that time, I had no idea uh, what I was going to do when I reached that goal. And so, um, consequently, I, like I said, I got down to 258 pounds over two years. I learned how to exercise, which was great. Uh, that was one of the things that I will say about that part of my health journey was that I learned how um, to exercise. I learned how to lift weights. I learned how to uh, you know, have an exercise program that I could stick to. And that has stayed with me, and that's great. Um, that is a part of being a healthy person, um, is to be able to be active. Um, having said that, that's pretty much the only thing uh, that I really took from that experience. <coughs> Excuse me. And over the next uh, several years, I gained that 140 pounds back, plus an additional 75 pounds. Um, so by the time 
2019 rolled around, I was weighing in at 475 pounds. Um, in 2019, I tried another uh, diet program, um, and I was able to lose about 50 pounds in like three or four months. Um, the thing with this particular program was that it had a lot, uh, you, you were eating a lot of processed food, uh, bars and shakes and snacks and that sort of thing. It was prohibitively expensive. And um, I just didn't see how it was gonna be sustainable for me. And so, I, honestly, it wasn't very financially, it just wasn't sustainable for me. Um, that wasn't probably the only reason that it wasn't successful for me, but it was definitely a reason why it wasn't successful for me. And so, um, of course, 2020 rolls around, and 2020 was pretty rough for everybody. Um, although I'm certainly not gonna blame where I got from a health perspective on 2020, it didn't help but I was uh, certainly floundering before 2020 rolled around um, and easily gained back the weight that I had lost. And I, the last time I tipped the scales, um, I was again back at 475 pounds, give or take. Um, I'd actually gotten, obviously to the point, I don't know if, if there's a lot of you out there who probably don't know, but most home scales are really only gonna weigh you to about 400 pounds. So I weighed err, E-R-R, for a long time, which is error, which means that my home scale could not weigh me. Um, so I could weigh myself at my gym that had more of a, like a doctor kind of a scale, and I could weigh myself there, but I couldn't weigh myself at home. Um, so, but the last time I had stepped on the scales, uh, I was about 475 pounds, and I was really unhealthy. Um, my, my health markers really weren't too bad. Uh, I'm the kind of person who hates going to doctors, and so, you know, I I didn't really go to doctors. I didn't get my blood work done. Um, the last time I had my blood work done, I think, was a couple of years ago, and everything was okay. Um, it wasn't it wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. Um, my blood pressure was okay. I think honestly, doctors were really surprised that somebody at my size, my my health markers weren't worse. Um, but what I will definitely say is that I felt awful. Um, lower back pain had become a part of my everyday life. It hurt to walk any length, uh, any distance really, not, not far at all. Um, I certainly wasn't exercising in any way, shape, or form. And I'd gotten to the point where I really had quit doing things with my family. I, I have a vivid memory of a couple of years ago just walking from the parking lot at the high school um, where uh, my kids, well, my son goes now. I don't. I, he wasn't probably in high school at the time, but uh, going to one of his uh, concerts, and it was a struggle for me to walk from the parking lot into the auditorium uh, for the um, program that he had. And I remember like almost yelling at my kids, saying, "Hey, slow down!" You know. And um, I, I have that memory uh, that's etched in my mind of not being able to just walk from here to there with my family. I had gotten to the point where I wouldn't want to go with my wife if she needed to go pick something up from the store because it was too much of a hassle for me to walk around Walmart, to walk around the grocery store, to get from the car in the parking lot into the store was a, a challenge for me and that was um, really exercise for me was to go from the car to the store. And so I quit going out of the house, really. And it was very, uh, a very dark and difficult time for me. Um, and I was literally floundering and just didn't know what to do, but I knew that I needed to do something. And uh, many of you who, who've kind of followed my journey on Facebook will know that I started on Facebook, I started posting uh, my health journey updates. And it was uh, kind of an accountability thing for me. And I started posting about my daily attempts to start exercising again. Because like I said, I couldn't get around the block without being in just a lot of pain. Um, but so I tried. I, I figured that, you know, it's amazing what the human body can do when you uh, try to do something with it. And so I tried to start walking. This was probably in January, uh, give or take, of 2021. And during that time, I'd been uh, doing that for a couple of months. And in March of 2021, uh, a gentleman by uh, the name of Michael McCain, uh, a friend of uh, my parents, really, he knew me a little bit, 
but he reached out to me privately uh, via a Facebook message and said, hey, um, see that you're trying to get healthy. I see that you're trying to, um, you know, exercise and things, and I, I have a way that I eat, and I uh, just wanted to share it with you. And he, I think he might have even told me a little bit about what he did. Uh, and I said, gee, that's great. I'll have to check that out, which was code for, like, please leave me alone. Um, and that was it. That was it. March of 2021. Thank you, and, you know, go on with my life. And so I tried uh, a little bit more to... Um, get active like I was trying to walk around the block and like I said walking around the block was really tough for me um, but I tried and I had a little bit of progress with that didn't even think about addressing uh, the nutrition piece of my life um, got to July of uh, 2021 and we went on a family vacation my wife's uh, family um, gets together and has what kind of a mini family reunion uh, we'll call it every summer they go somewhere and um, this year was, um, we went to Florida, and we had a really nice house that was less than two blocks from the beach. And what I remember about that trip is that first, <coughs> excuse me, I could barely get from the beach house down to the beach. And that was really, it was two blocks, not even quite two blocks, and it was level ground. Uh, there was no hill or anything. And, I mean, there, you know, you had to go down to the beach, but that was it. And it was hard. It, it was really hard for me to make that little journey from the beach house to the beach. The other thing that I remember about that trip is that I really couldn't be on the beach with my family. Um, and the reason that I couldn't be on the beach with my family is because I could not get myself up off of the beach. If I were to sit down on the beach... I would literally be the equivalent of a beach whale. Uh, I would not, I couldn't get up on my own. I, I'm sure that my, my family, my brother-in-laws would have been willing to help me get up, but I literally could not get up off of the beach on my own. And so I would go down to the water and I would get into the ocean and I would swim and, and uh, be in the ocean, play in the ocean, be with my, with my kids, my family. But when I was done with that, uh, again, I couldn't go sit on the beach. So I would go from the beach, I would go back to the beach house and stay at the pool. Um, and I just remember on that vacation, that realization that I just couldn't be with my family like I wanted to be. And I um, was really upset about that. And really, um, it kind of caused me to take a step back and look at my life and go, what am I doing? Um, that happened in July. And the other thing that happened in July is that my son uh, wanted to go to a father-son camp out. And that father-son camp out was about um, 70 miles south of where we live. And I could not uh, sleep in a tent. I know, Nobody likes to sleep on the ground, I don't think. Or a lot of people, most people don't like to sleep on the ground. Um, but I physically couldn't. Once again, because when I would get down onto the ground, it was very difficult for me at that point to get up. And so I remember he went down um, to the camp out and I stayed home and I drove down the next morning and had breakfast with him. But I realized there again that I missed out on being able to spend time with my son because I physically couldn't. <clears throat> and so um, at that point, uh, this gentleman who had reached out to me before um, actually just made some comments on the photos that we had of my son at that, at that camp out. He was fishing. And it, something in my memory kind of jog, kind of jogged my memory. Yeah, he had reached out to me, um, you know, back in March. And, and I was desperate enough, really, um, that at that point I said, okay, let's find out what it is that this guy does. And my friend uh, told me about uh, the carnivore diet, which was what he uh, was doing and still does. And that was that he ate only meat, and that was it. And he asked if I would be interested in that diet, um, and learning about that diet. And uh, because of that, I found uh, the ketogenic way of eating, keto uh, lifestyle. And uh, I am forever grateful to him for being willing to reach out to me and to share his um, experience with me. Now, I, I didn't land on carnivore. I tried it for a little while and found that 
I wanted and needed a little bit more variety in my life. And so in addition to eating meat, and I'm still a, a meat focused person, um, in addition to eating meat, I eat vegetables, um, you know, low carb vegetables. And I basically try to keep my carbohydrates under 20 grams a day. And, I, and I'm successful in that most days. Um, but he uh, was kind of my jumping off point. So that was in July of 2021. Um, I reached out to him and he told me about what he did. And he sent me some links to some videos, um, which is actually the reason that I started this YouTube channel. It's a big part of my health journey has been um, watching and, and listening to other people and their journeys. Um, there have been several uh, keto people that have been very influential and very helpful to me. Uh, the first couple people that I found uh, was uh, Nisha Salisbury and uh, Dr. Ken Berry. And their um, uh, YouTube videos, I literally binge-watched those. I Obviously, they've been... They've had YouTube channels for a long time, and there were lots and lots of videos that I could watch. And I probably watched two years worth of their YouTube videos in a matter of a couple of weeks. And I really got up to speed on the keto lifestyle. And, and they are very down to earth. Uh, they're just the way that they talk about things really speaks to me. Um, I'm just a country boy from western Nebraska, and uh, so, you know, just, just the way that they talk about things, really, it really speaks to me and it really spoke to me, and so I'm really thankful for their channel, uh, for finding them. Another person that I found um, that was really great uh, was Kim Howerton. Uh, she's the ketonist, I believe, is, is uh, the way all her stuff is branded, but she's great, too, and she has a podcast, and she also has um, a YouTube channel, and she does lives and that sort of thing. Um, but she was fantastic um, and just really informative. She really talks a lot about the, the mental health, it, the mental side of, of things with the keto diet. So I found her pretty early on. Um, and then uh, a couple other, th other things or groups that I found is I found uh, two crazy ketos, Rachel and Joe. And they are just the funnest people ever. Um, and I love their, their YouTube channel and their website. Joe's got a lot of great recipes. Um, and then the last uh, group or the last people that I found was Keto Chow. Uh, that would be Chris and Miriam Bear. And uh, their product is awesome. Um, it's a great uh, kind of supplement to the keto lifestyle. Um, one of the things that I love about the keto lifestyle is that it's basically free. Uh, meaning, obviously, we all have to eat, so there's food involved. But the, there's no... Um, you know, program of stuff like with Nutrisystem or Weight Watchers or whatever. Uh, the one exception for me with that is is Keto Chow, which is basically a nutritionally complete, as Chris would say, and absolutely it is, um, meal replacement. It's a shake. And it's great for me because it's a good supplement, but in no way, shape, or form is it my, my program. I focus on eating whole foods, eating meat, eating vegetables, um, but I'm able to supplement on, on days when I don't have leftovers or that sort of thing. I can make a shake, and I really enjoy that. Um, I feel like I kind of got off on a tangent there, but anyway, to get back to my my keto journey, so in July of 2021, I um, found keto, and uh, for those of you who've been following me on Facebook, you will know that for the first 90 days, there was nothing not a peep out of me. Um, I did not tell anybody that I was starting keto. Um, and I actually looked and, uh, July 21st of 2021 was when I started my journey on keto. And the first time that I posted about it on Facebook and shared was October 21st of 2021. So it was 90 days. And, uh, the reason for that was that, um, and I believe I mentioned this in, in my introduction video, but was that I believed that, that the keto lifestyle just like anything else that I've ever tried, I thought that the keto lifestyle was going to be something that I tried and that I tried for a few weeks, maybe for a few months, and that just like anything else, you know, it wasn't going to work and um, that that would be it. And so I certainly didn't really want to tell people about it. Um, and for those first 90 days, I really focused on my nutrition and on healthy eating. Um... I did not focus on exercise at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, I remember that I actually posted in my first post in October uh, that the exercise that I got was just intentionally moving around. I made an effort. Uh, as I said, I'd gotten to the point where I couldn't go to the store with my wife or, or go and do things with my kids. I was making a conscious effort to 
go and do those things. But that was my exercise. I didn't go to the gym. I didn't go to the gym one time in the first 90 days that I did keto. Um, and in that time, I lost what I would think would be around 70 pounds. Again, the last time I had stepped on the scale, I was about 475. So I was pushing 500 pounds. Um, but I don't know exactly what I weighed by October of that year because, once again, talking about the home scales, I weighed err. Error. I, I couldn't weigh me yet. Um, it was actually in November of 2021 was the first time that I was actually able to weigh myself because I finally got under 400 pounds. So I, I was uh, 399 pounds, so down you know, 76-ish pounds. Again, I don't exactly know what I weighed because it, weighing myself was difficult. I couldn't weigh myself at home. But uh, anyway, so again, for those first 90 days, I focused on my nutrition and I focused on learning about the keto lifestyle and learning about the, the do's and the don'ts of the keto lifestyle. And the great thing about the keto lifestyle, for any of you who want to know about it, um, there's a ton of great resources out there. I, I, like I said, I mentioned a few of the, of the um, keto influencers, I guess. Um, but it's really simple. Uh, is it easy? No, not always, but it is really simple. Uh, you focus on eating meat first, and you eat vegetables, and that's about it. Um, you know, the things that you don't eat, you don't eat bread, you don't eat sugar. Um, but if you focus on eating your meat and eat your vegetables and, you know, keep your carbohydrates under 20 grams, good things happen. Good things have happened for me. Um, during my keto journey thus far, I've been doing keto for just about uh, a year, I, just over a year, I should say. Um, and in that time, I have gone from... 475-ish pounds uh, down to 330 pounds. So I've lost 145 pounds. And um, as I mentioned in my introduction video, that weight loss is great and seeing that number is great. Um, but the bigger thing is how much different I feel. And that is something that happened for me right away. Um, like I said, I'd gotten to the point where any kind of physical activity was difficult. And I just accepted that because of my weight and because of my size, um, physical activity was just a problem for me. Um, and my back hurt when I went to do anything. Um, I uh, had the opportunity for my, and have the opportunity for my church to speak to congregations once a month. Um, and I had gotten to the point where actually standing in front of a, a lectern and giving a, uh, a talk to a congregation a 15 to 20 minutes was difficult for me. My back would hurt by the end of my um, my speaking time, and I would really have my hands on that podium, leaning hard on that podium uh, to speak. And so to give you a perspective of kind of where I was at, I, I just had thought that that was kind of life for me. Um, and obviously, like I said, over the last year, I've lost a lot of weight, but I will tell you that that back pain I think was really related to the inflammation that I had going on in my body because it was 75%, 80% less within the first couple of weeks of keto. Um, my back pain was really mostly gone. I was able to start walking around and doing things with my family. Um, again, when I got about 90 days into my keto journey, I decided that I wanted to start exercising. And I had a gym membership um, that was not being used. Um, so at about at that point, I started going to the gym and I started uh, doing uh, 30 minutes a day on the elliptical machine. Um, I started lifting weights a little bit and that really helped me. Um, and, you know, one thing I really want to tell anybody out there who's looking to start a health journey is that I believe that exercise is very important for your mental health and for your heart and it can help you to do the things that you want to do. But I do not believe that exercise is a key to losing weight. Um, and I know I am not a medical professional. I am I'm not a healthcare professional, and nothing that I say should ever be taken as as medical advice. I'm not that. I'm just a guy um, who's lost 145 pounds. But I will tell you that for me, um, the key to weight loss is what you put into your body, the nutrition, that uh, what you eat. Um, and exercise is never going to be a, um, 
it's never going to be the most important part of, of your of your health or your health journey. Um, I tried that. Uh, you know, as, as I mentioned to you, I lost a bunch of weight uh, 10 years ago, and I was exercising three times a day. I was exercising uh, 30 minutes before work, 30 minutes during my lunch hour, and 30 minutes after work. And that helped me to lose that weight, but there was no way to keep it off because that wasn't really sustainable for me. Um, that wasn't, uh, I wasn't spending time with my family. I was spending all my time at the gym. And really, if I stopped and thought about it, why did I want to lose this weight? Why did I want to be uh, healthier? It was to be able to do things with my family. And so trying to exercise away my, uh, my weight was just taking time away from my family. Uh, and I was trying to outrun my fork, which I don't believe you can do. Um, <clears throat> having said that, I do think that exercise is very important for your mental health. Um, and it's been very helpful for me from a mental health uh, perspective. Um, other things uh, that, I've, that I've come across in the last year, I would say uh, I discovered um, yoga. Um, I actually do, for exercise, I do a program called DDPY, which is Diamond Dallas Page Yoga. That's what, that's what that stands for. Um, and that's fantastic. That's been wonderful for my, my flexibility, my core strength. And uh, that's been really helpful to me. Um, like I said, exercise is really helpful, but the the eating and eating um, whole foods and nutritious foods and foods that don't cause me to crave or binge has really been the thing that's made all the difference for me. And I will tell you um, that I'm a food addict. I absolutely am. I, and I am. I was addicted to sugar. I was addicted to carbs. And I am the kind of person that, uh, I believe it's, I believe it's Kim Howerton, but I'm not hundred percent sure who says this, but there's basically two types of people out there. There are abstainers and there are moderators, people who can have a little bit of something versus people who just have to stay away from it. Um, and I just have to stay away from sugar and carbs completely. Um, if I have a little bit of it, I want all of it. I can't have a cookie. I can't have a slice of pizza, if I start down that road, um, that's the end of it for me. Uh, my wife, who's actually joined me on this uh, keto journey, she joined me in October, so a couple of months in. She's a moderator. Um, she eats keto with me probably 95% of the time. The other 5%, you know, she'll have a little something that definitely wouldn't be on our plan, but that works for her um, because she's able to get right back on the next day. Um, like I said, for me, I just can't do uh, a little bit of carbs or a little bit of sugar because I don't want one cookie. I want all the cookies. I don't want a slice of pizza. I want all the pizza. I want to eat ice cream until I throw up. Um, and so I learned that about me. So I, I definitely am not able to moderate. Now, will that always be true for me? I don't know. Um, is that uh, you know, is it like alcohol where it's like I could never, ever, ever again have sugar or I would just go off the rails? I don't know. I do know that for now, um, that's what I need to do to be successful is really just stay away from that stuff all the time. Um, like I said, my wife, she doesn't necessarily need to do that. And then and having a little something every once in a while, that, that works for her. Um, but uh, yeah, so anyway, I um, have had... Pretty good success consistently over the last year. Um, I've really only eaten off plan a couple of times. I did manage to get successfully through the holidays of uh, 2021 with really no issues. Thanksgiving was actually pretty easy. There's a lot of really great food, a lot of great meat and vegetables that you can eat at Thanksgiving and at Christmas. Um, I did eat off plan for a couple of days right after Christmas. Um, I think that was probably somewhat due to the holidays, but the other thing that my wife and I discovered was that uh, my wife was out of town for a week and she's a real support and a real help to me and uh, we discovered that when she's gone I that's hard for me and so when she got back into town the relaxation of her being back in town uh, I actually chose to eat off plan for a few days and that was hard um, that happened to me again when she went out of town uh, in the month of April now, compounding the month of April, my what I what I do for an actual job is I work as a tax accountant, so a little bit stressed in the month of April too. Uh, but my wife being gone uh, for something to do with her teaching responsibilities, I ate off plan a little bit during that time period. 
But uh, I will tell you guys uh, that the keto lifestyle has been um, really, for the most part, pretty easy for me. And it's made such a huge difference in my life. It has allowed me to be able to be active with my kids. It's been able to allow me to be active with my wife. I can tell you a little bit about um, my summer vacation this year. Um, we actually had the opportunity to go to Hawaii and um, went to Hawaii three years ago. And the difference between this trip to Hawaii uh, this year and the trip that I had three years ago was basically night and day. I spent the majority of my vacation doing things active things. I went for a hike. I hiked Waimea Canyon, went down into the canyon and up the other side. Now, do I want to do that hike again? No, that hike just about killed me. But it was awesome and it was amazing and I was able to do it. I went kayaking on this particular trip to Hawaii um, and then hiked back in to see a waterfall. I was able for the first time in several years to do the things that I wanted to do and that was because of the lifestyle that I live, the nutritional lifestyle that I live. And I am forever grateful that I've found that. And that really is a big part of why I wanted to start this, this channel and share with you is because keto has changed my life and allowed me to uh, be an active participant in my life again. I was able to, again, do the things on vacation that I wanted to do. I was able to go. I was able to uh, go with my family. And I was able to, um, like I said, kayak and hike and be outside. And I am an active person. I, I like to do things outside. Now, am I ever going to be a person who's going to run triathlons? Probably not. I don't think running is all that fun. But I like doing things outside. I like going for walks with my wife. I like going for hikes with my family. And the keto lifestyle has allowed me to do that. Um, as I move forward uh, here on my channel, I want to continue to share with you um, basically just uh, my life. And, you know, I, I would say that I would title this my keto journey so far because I, I've been on uh, this keto path here for just over a year. Um, but uh, my journey is certainly not done. I, you know, from a weight loss perspective, I still have another, uh, you know, 130 pounds that I want to lose. Um, but I want to continue to share with you um, things that kind of, uh, things that have helped me. And I also want to just share the, kind of the mental health side of, um, of a health journey. And the things that... Uh, I thought about that have been helpful to me and that have um, helped kind of keep me on track when things have gotten difficult. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed this, uh, basically me just kind of telling you about my life and about uh, who I am and how I got to be where I am. Um, encourage you to like my video. Uh, encourage you definitely to share my video with your friends if you think it would be helpful to them. Um, subscribe to my channel. My goal is to probably share one of these videos at least once a week. Um, probably not all going to be quite as long as this one, but um, I would like to share a little bit with you about what's going on in my life and about things that I found that have been helpful to me uh, at least once a week. If you have any questions um, about anything that I've shared, if you have any questions about my journey or questions about keto, uh, feel free to put those into the comments and I will try to answer those as best I can. Um, I want to tell you how much I love and appreciate all of you, uh, those who have supported me on my journey. You guys are the best. Um, I really appreciate the encouragement of the keto community. Uh, I really appreciate the encouragement of my family and friends as I've been on this uh, <clears throat> on this health journey. I um, have really felt the love and support of my family, my friends, and, and of the keto community. That's one of the great things uh, just for anybody out there who's maybe coming to this for the first time. The keto community is awesome. Um, everybody just wants to help um, everybody else. It's, it's really, it's funny because I will tell you that I do not believe that your health or food is in any way, shape, or form a religion. But in a lot of ways, it's kind of like it because when you have this awakening, um, 
and you found that there's a better way to do things, there's a better way to eat, there's a better way to be, you really want to share it with your friends and you really want to help your friends and your family. And, uh, you know, I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to proselyte about keto, um, but I do want people to be able to share in my joy and be able to feel um, as good as I feel from a health perspective. And I think that's how the community is. Um, it's a really positive place. It's an encouraging place and people just want other people to succeed. So anyway, um, that's my health journey to this point. Um, keep calm and keto on and I will uh, talk to you guys soon.